Okay, good evening everybody. It's uh, Sunday night here. I almost couldn't say that because it's 11 o'clock and my incident commander, Deputy Tom Kerr, thinks I should be in bed right now, but we're not going to give up. We have some things to update for you today. Good day on the fire for the firefighters. The south wind this evening, actually a lot of you are probably wondering, is that our smoke? We're pretty sure that's a Swan Lake smoke blowing up from the south. When that does happen on the Kenai, it blows through Sterling and then up and over up to us. We didn't produce a whole lot of smoke today. It wasn't like there was a big increase in fire activity. I just talked to Matt Jones, the former superintendent of the Pioneer Peak Hot Shots, and he, that's the, the seed that he planted, is that the smoke from the Swan Lake kind of blew into our fire area today. It did push a whole lot of trees over, and the crews had to pull out for safety reasons. That's what we're doing. We hope you're doing the same. So let's go over those hazards again. The ash pits today, we know a couple of civilians stepped into them because they told us. Uh, we appreciate that feedback. We've been worried about that. And we want to make sure everybody knows. It's not like there's a couple ash pits out there. There are literally thousands. They're all across every property and every bit of acre of this whole burn area. It's kind of unique to this big chart we're talking about up here. When we go off into this unknown land of drought, we get into the fact that everything on the ground burns. And that's what's creating those ash pits. We've been handing out flyers of those other hazards, which includes the trees coming down. Of course, we get out of the way. We hope that if you are home or if you're returning home soon, that you do that too. We also have those power lines coming to your property, might have been burned or all those types of uh, dangly effects. Stay away from those. They are working really hard right now, the uh, MEA crews, to go and try to get all the power lines back up from the 88 miles south towards 84 so they can re-energize that. That looks like a couple more days on that process. So. For those of you who are wondering when that power is coming back, they're putting the poles up. You can see them actively working on the highway. They have the crews working down, and they're joined by feller bunchers, which are mechanical tree cutters. We're trying to use force multipliers, equipment that can really do more than just a hand crew, and uh, we're going to see more of that decking going on. We know a lot of you are uh, in this break it down session. It's kind of like this is your potpourri of questions. We've been really grateful for them. So people have been asking about firewood. Uh, the managers and the borough are working out a plan. So there's going to be just tens of thousands of cords of trees decked in different places. Not all of them will be safe for the public to go and cut. Some will, some won't. We'll come up with that plan for you. We know it's firewood season, but just suffice it to say, uh, if it's on your property and it's private wood, it's yours. If it's in easements and such, we'll figure out a way to get you more firewood than you could ever possibly cut. Just give us time to get that figured out in the safest way. We have the crews working, we have the engines working. We really like when public talks to us out at Chief Creek Lodge and tells us things like, hey, we were coming around, we saw a crew, we slowed way down. But um, not everybody necessarily knows that. So spread that word. Our forces are engaged. We're still circling this fire. We have the good containment up top. We have containment on this side, but we're still, we have the three crews, the Santiam, Umqua, and Warm Springs are still working in this area. We have all the other crews linking all these areas together and trying to get that full containment. And so again, if they can stay focused on their work and if you recognize the hazards and let them work, not everything that you see in firefighting is a hazard. For example, if a tree in the center is burning, but there's a lot of black around it, to us, that's just a flare up. That's not gonna go anywhere. But to somebody who's never seen it, might, might think that's the end of the world. And we've had some accounts of that, so please, you gotta sort of school up quickly and realize what's a hazard and what's not. We know people are asking about the school bus schedule. We're gonna get that figured out tomorrow. We're meeting with the, the school district bus coordinator at 10.30 and then we'll be able to give you an update. I talked to Stacy this morning at Chief Creek and she has children in two different bus areas and I know that moms like her are really looking forward to getting that plan figured out, so that's coming. A lot of that depends on some of the other factors like the road traffic of being able to stay open and right now we're able to keep two lanes open but if for some reason either motors weren't able to follow the directions and caused a big accident or something impacted our operations we might have to go and, and close down that road again and that would affect schools. so just keep that in mind we're all in this together Alaskans like to be part of the solution but we all need everybody to be safe on that road that's what keeps the parks highway open you know, we have questions about the Postal Service and whether they'll be delivering soon after re-entry. Uh, we know that the new traffic pattern, uh, some folks kind of see our engines maybe trying to pull out of Sheep Creek Lodge with uh, the lights on and they think that they're just there pumping water. So with this new two-lane, please keep in mind that 
if you see our apparatus trying to come out on the highway, they probably are just trying to join the normal traffic pattern to get down to where they need to go. We've told our firefighters to please not speed, to please not cut around any of the civilian traffic. Um, it's different than when it was pilot car, and so it's just really important to, um, to keep it there. What you're hearing in the background is the tunes and commanders saying goodnight to each other. So if you're at home wondering what those sounds are, that's Norm and Tom wishing themselves the best of rest tonight because they've been working hard and now they're looking at us like we, we've thrown them under the bus. We're but up. We're but, you, but we try to keep a very, trans a very transparent room months. in here so this isn't some studio, this is the command post and on Sunday night at 11 o'clock you're going to hear those voices in the background and, and we just wanted to make sure that they know that we just called them out, <laughs> right? Right. Okay, <laughs> I've got Stephanie Bishop behind the camera. She's going to come out here and uh, come on out Stephanie. And then in the back row is, uh, we call ourselves first name and last name. One of our plans guys, Casey, and then I'm last name because kill Casey. So we, we do get familiar with each other and we're getting more familiar with you. It's just been amazing to be out in the community and have folks say things like, wow, you know, we listen to live feed and here's, here's what we'd like you to address next. And we take those notes. I took a whole bunch of notes today at Sheep Creek. A uh, big shout out. Over there. Yep, and <laughs> Stephanie's got hers. And so when you walk in that door and you come to us, we're listening. We're active listeners. We want to answer every one of your questions and a, and a bunch of shout outs now. I'll go first and then you'll finish it off and I'll Absolutely. jump out of the way. Absolutely. Candy and the crew at Sheep Creek Lodge doing the food pantry. If you're a local, if you live anywhere up and down the Parks Highway and you need support in that area for food, dog food, there's a whole room what I call the Willow 300 Banquet Award Room, because that's where we had our banquet a couple years ago, the last time we had the Willow 300 here. Yes. It's a brand new 300 mile sled dog race, and we're very proud of it. That room is full of supplies that people have donated for the locals. If you live up and down any of the roads and you need support, and it's just a huge community effort, Sheep Creek Lodge themselves, they're not open to the public, but they are providing a service to the firefighters and the MEA and the locals there, so thanks so much. And I'm gonna pass it off to Stephanie who's been behind a lot of the scenes here, folks, writing updates, getting press releases ready. You know, let's say, for example, we're going to have re-entry tomorrow. She's going to be up on it. So I'll jump out of the way. Um, just reiterate what Kel said. Sheep Creek Lodge has been awesome and great. They've helped a lot. They've also done a lot of uh, interest of allowing us to utilize their parking lot and stay close so that we can utilize their parking lot. So thank you, uh, Sheep Creek. And I know Kel does that on a regular basis. My big thing is, is I want to thank all of the homeowners and citizens and the community members that have come in throughout our incident command post on a daily basis, bringing the postcards with stamps on them for the firefighters to mail back home. Uh, we've gotten probably four or 500 here and there. I've taken them to the uh, camp briefings. They have uh, pulled pictures, pulled, picked the ones that they want with the pictures, wrote them up, and I will take them and drop them off for them at the post office. So. Firefighters love them, please bring, keep bringing them if you'd like to. Um, please keep continuing asking your questions anytime on any of our live feeds. Myself and the other PIOs will pull those questions off and we try to uh, filter them and get as much information and detail as we can on them. As well as we, if you come in here just to say hi, we really like that too. I don't always get to go out in the field and see the community. This is not only a community that I'm here in for this fire, but it's a community I work for. Uh, within the Matsu borough area. So it's been uh, great to be here and see you guys and give you hugs and everything. So um, I have to go finish writing tomorrow's update and uh, helping Cal with anything, but I'll see before I jump off if there's any questions that might've came up that I can try to answer. It's things that, it, you're doing a great job, Steph. It's things that we're gonna deal with in this meeting Tuesday night at the, it's like when will the dumpsters yes. be available yes. for spoiled food and so for those of you who are, have not seen it, our Facebook uh, post, we are having another community meeting that will be Tuesday night at uh, the Willow Elementary School again at 6.30 p.m. Again, we're going to have one more community meeting uh, this week. It's going to be Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. at the Willow Elementary School. We're going to have members from hopefully Red Cross will be there to help address a few questions. Several bu uh, borough representatives will be there, and the big topic that night is going to be the dumpsters and what you guys can do with your debris. I will tell you that the borough is working very hard on getting all those details up and ready and prepared for you guys. So that's going to be the hot topic that night. It will again be live streamed as usual. 
Um, Kale does a really good job. It's one of the best ways of getting that information out to you immediately and quickly too. Um, is there any other questions? No, just we want to thank Robert Wilkinson for the prayer from Southern Oregon. Thank um, you, Mr. Robert Boothby, Wilkinson. our state fire marshal is watching. Thanks for joining us there. We, I mean, we have Kim Schlossler and, and Dee, our neighbors down the road, still very much engaged. Um, Don Darty saying, you guys are amazing. Thanks for keeping us informed. We're, we're, we're inspired just to serve. And then Tim Mowry up in Fairbanks. I mean, the, this community is amazing. And Tim's another one who probably should be in bed too. <laughs> it's a little late. I'm surprised uh, Chief Booth is up too. He should probably be in bed. We should probably all be in bed is probably a good way to say this. So thank you all for watching and have a good night.